San Francisco's Chinatown was just waking up. I was on my way to keep an appointment with Rose Kai. I've known her since she was a little girl. Her father was one of my oldest friends. She sounded very upset when she called me. She begged me not to ask questions, but to meet her right away. That was about 45 minutes ago. No matter how I tried, I couldn't imagine what was troubling her. Only last night, I'd had dinner with her family and Tai Ling. They hadn't seemed upset or worried. I kept telling myself that Rose was probably in love with some nice young man and wanted me to talk to her father. Hello, Rose. I was so afraid you might not be here. I got your message. Last week, my cousin was killed. Two days ago, my brother was killed. I'm sorry. How? I don't know. But I saw Tai Ling and your father yesterday. They didn't tell me anything about it. We are told not to ask questions, nor to tell anyone. They need your help. Only don't tell them I told you. No, I won't. It was just 8 a.m., and I figured Tai Ling at this hour would be opening his shop. I was a little angry to think that he hadn't said anything to me about Rose's brother's death. If anything was wrong, I wanted to help. Chinatown isn't very big, so I decided to walk. I recognized Mr. Castor. In a way, he's practically a landmark in this section of the city. His job and his hobby is to take street pictures, and he knows everybody. Hello, Castor. Hi, Mike. If I hadn't been in a hurry, I'd have stopped to talk. Instead, I went on to Tai Ling's. I didn't quite know why, but I had a feeling that time was important. I want you to meet Mr. Frank Parker, Mr. Lanyard. Hello, Hello Parker. I, uh, I have a meeting. I have to be leaving. Glad to meet you, sir. Thanks. Won't you sit down? Who's Parker? He's a good friend of ours. He's our attorney. I'll send for some coffee. No, don't bother. When I saw you yesterday, I asked you a simple question. You lied to me. I lied to you? Yes. I asked you how things were going, and you said great. Well, there are some things I can't complain about. Your nephew was a friend of mine. I was shocked to hear he was killed. Why didn't you tell me? There are times, Mike, when one finds it necessary to be silent. Rose's brother was also a friend of mine. I wasn't invited to the funeral. Why? I wish you wouldn't ask me any more questions. At the moment, I can't answer them. Yeah, I think I understand. You don't trust me. That's not the reason. What is the reason, then? I'd like to tell you, but I can't. If you wanted to, we wouldn't be standing here playing chess. But it wouldn't be fair to you to involve you. Let me decide that, will you? Two weeks ago, my son was struck down with a hatchet. As you already know, Rose's brother and cousin were killed. Any one of us might be next. A society calling themselves a Tong has been formed. We do not know who is its leader. They want weekly payments from us, and if we do not join and pay them their dues each week, we will all be killed. Sounds like Chicago in the 20s. We must settle this problem ourselves. We cannot go to the authorities, at least not yet. I don't agree with you. We must not attract the wrong kind of attention. If it should get into the newspapers, there would be the old cry and fear of Tong. Because of ignorance, people have been misled by this word. The Tong was merely a society. Families belonged to them. Oh, it's true, in the old days, some of the Tongs fought with each other, but that's in the past. Have you any idea who's behind all this? We see a man who comes into the store to collect the money. So far, we have refused him, but it has been costly. Is he from San Francisco? I've never seen him before. All I know is his name, Chang. Tiling was terrified. He said the hatchet was a warning, but he didn't want to involve me. I told him when a hatchet is thrown at me, I'm automatically in the game. 
He didn't know much more except that the strong arm man was called Chang. I left wanting to find Mr. Chang. Tiling had said Frank Parker was his attorney. The odds were against Parker being able to tell me anything more than Tai Ling. But even a long shot sometimes clicks. I went to his office. Oh, nice of you to drop by, Mr. Lanyard. Won't you sit down? Thanks. Can I do something for you? I don't know. Perhaps you can. Parker, how long have you been Tai Ling's attorney? Oh, a little over a year. Why? Well, then you know all about the trouble, huh? Mr. Lanyard, I don't agree with my clients, but they've instructed me not to discuss their problem with anyone. If it makes you feel any easier, Tai Ling told me about the tongue. I also know about the killings and his son. It's the most horrible thing I've ever seen. A hatchet man has never been attractive. Well, now that you know, is there anything you can do? Well, I don't know. I can try. And if you're not successful, then what? Got any ideas? I may sound like a coward, but certainly money isn't as important as a life. And already it's cost more than one. Mr. Lanyard, I've heard about you and I implore you to help. But if you're not successful, please stop the violence. Tyling will listen to you. Tell him either to go to the police or meet the town's demands. Yeah, you may be right. I'll think about it. Thanks, Parker. When you live around violence, you develop an instinct. I had a feeling I was being tailed. I couldn't spot anyone in particular, so I headed into one of the many alleys. I didn't hear or see the silk cord. I only felt it tighten around my throat. The feeling didn't last long because everything went quiet and black. My mouth was dry and my head ached. I didn't know where I was, but I knew it was somebody's cellar. The room was dimly lit. The only window was too high for me to reach. Then I saw it. For a second, my breath stopped. I don't know how long the snake had been in the cellar with me. I knew only that I wanted out. I moved for the staircase. The snake headed for me. I had met Mr. Chang. What's the matter, Lanyard? Didn't you like your companion? We thought you'd like him for a pet. We'll settle this tonight. And when we do, it'll be out in the street where everyone can see you. You're a dead man, Lanyard. Dead men, get out. See you tonight. I'll see you before then. Mr. Castro had heard the rumor I was a dead man. He didn't want to have anything to do with me. He didn't have very much choice. A few seconds later, he was sure that my hours alive were limited. It had missed me by not more than a couple of inches. I'll never get hungry again, so heaven help me. No more shortcuts. 
Let's stick to the streets. I told him that I wanted to see every photograph that he'd taken for the past two weeks. We headed straight for his studio. I kept watching the people as we passed. I was trying to figure out who was behind this whole operation. I couldn't forget the fear of my old friends. I looked at Castor. He was no different, just plain frightened. Under different circumstances, I would have been highly amused. Castor's studio was decorated like a Halloween witch's hut. Castor was truly a strange little man. I happen to be fond of Halloween. I don't know how much this will help you, but here are all the pictures I've taken the past two weeks. Thanks. I'll never understand you. Why? What do you get out of this? What do you get out of taking pictures? Okay. Only I'd rather live my way. Who is he? How would I know? He didn't send for his picture. Everybody in town knows who he is. Quit stalling. I'm a middleman. I never take sides. I got news for you. You're on my side. Why don't you try the Hong Hong Cafe at about five? They serve a wonderful pizza. It had better be good, or I'll be back. It was 4.57 when I reached the Hong Hong Cafe. I hoped that Castor's tip was right. It was. The restaurant door opened. Chang walked in. No, we say it, man. He didn't see me. Got any peanuts? Mr. Chang was going to have a visitor. He was going to get some very special treatment, and I was going to enjoy it. You want me to wait for you? Okay, boss. Right. I wait here. What's the matter, tough guy? Did you miss not having your boys around? What do you want? Answers, and lots of them. I don't know, nothing. No? Let's start from the beginning. Where do you come from? Pardon? Who are you working for? The association. Who's the chief man? I don't know. Who killed Tiling's nephew and the others? Well, you're asking the wrong guy. Listen, Chang. I don't like being pushed around. I don't like being told I'm a dead man. I don't like having a noose around my throat. I especially don't like you. Here we go. You didn't give the others a chance. Now only a question of waiting. It was almost over. Chang had been talking to the head man when I came in. He was on his way over. Soon I'd have all the right answers. Frank Parker. This is a surprise. You been waiting long? Not too long. Oh, it must have been quite important. I came as quickly as I could. Your phone must have said to hurry. Who do you think you're kidding? Say, what's happening? What's the meaning of this? Take a look. He told me everything. People have to talk about. Doc 
Becker must have ducked into one of the alleys. He couldn't have gone far. I went to Tai Ling's. I had news for him, but I found out he was one step ahead of me. You need not worry. Frank Parker will never get off the streets. What fools we've been. You were holding out on me. Mr. Castor was in the alley. He saw you and Parker in back of the Hong Hong Cafe. We have surrounded the area. We will take care of it. Let me take care of him. My son died an hour ago. You said you didn't want to attract attention. The wrong kind. Don't do it now. We will turn him over to the proper authorities. That's your intention. But you can't trust any kind of a mob. They might lynch him. We know what we are doing. I don't think you do. If something goes wrong, you may put your people back 50 years. Frank Parker's not worth that much. Friday. Friday. Tiling and the rest wanted revenge. If they caught Frank Parker, I knew what would happen. Tiling didn't care about the consequences. He just lost his son. They had all stopped thinking straight. They wanted nothing but to get their hands on Parker. I had to get to him first. I started looking anywhere and everywhere. The buildings, cellars and alleys. He was nowhere in sight. Tiling must have given the word as soon as he realized the true identity of Parker. The community had quietly and effectively sealed off any escape route. Sometimes even the most peaceful people can become brutal and savage. Tiling and the merchants had reached that point. I meant it when I told Tiling that by doing the wrong thing, he'd set his people back 50 years. No matter how much I hated Parker, I had to find him to save his life. Tiling's men were either in front of me or half a dozen steps behind me. street men were waiting. They weren't attracting any attention. The town was doing business, people were casually shopping, yet no animal was ever hunted with more care. A long time ago I learned that when a crowd is noisy, you can quiet them. But when men are silent, anything can happen. scattered. I went in another direction. And I saw him. He was lucky. I wasn't going to kill him, but... Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. You got nothing against money, have you? I live much better with it, if that's what you mean. Look, I've planned this thing for a whole year. Play ball with me and I'll cut you in for half. 
We'll make a fortune. Who else is involved in this? I got a couple of guys working for me, but I, I pay them off late at night. Look, they, they, we can clean up. Who spotted me this morning? I did. Don't you understand? I have no partners. We'll cut 50-50. Who threw that axe at me? Chang. Did he kill Tithing's nephew, too? Yeah, yeah, look. There's just the two of us. There's plenty for both of us right down the middle. Oh, I've seen some rats in my time, but you top everything. <laughs> Homicide. Sorry, Samson. I didn't recognize you. We've been on to this thing for days. We knew Ty Ling's problem. You might tell Ty Ling that even the newspapers knew and kept it out of print. That's great. Oh. I think this is yours. We got it off Chang. Is it? It's six o'clock. It's been a long day. Designated as a delegate. It's a gift from Ty Ling and all the others. Well, they didn't have to do that. Tell them I appreciate it, will you? It's worth a lot of money. Say, maybe you have a way of living that's not so bad after all. Hello, Casta. You and I have one thing in common. If we had our way, every day would be Halloween. Mm -hmm. 